Another area of significant automation in software development is build management and release management. And we'll talk about these two uh, for the moment. Um, now, build management is the process of um, uh, compiling and uh, putting, assembling uh, the software system out of all the different uh, pieces of source code. Now, release management, on the other hand, is um, uh, shipping that out in, into um, operations. Um, release management frequently will, will release several builds at the same time, whereas build management normally is confined to the one uh, system, but it just depends where you are. Now, the history of build management is, uh, again, way back in the, the uh, dark ages of uh, computing. Um, the, the whole compilation of the program uh, from the source code into the executable was all very manually done. And um, it was uh, quite, a, quite a drama, really, um, especially if you've got a, a large system. Um, now, with the advent of um, many computer systems, um, they were talking about the PDPs and the, the VAXs, for those of you with a memory, uh, can take those in. That introduced uh, scripting languages where um, somebody devised a program that would track down all the files of the dependencies, uh, compile them in the sequence that you, you specified, and uh, put them all together and, and give you a finished product. So the whole thing was automatic. Now since that time, um, there have been a lot of um, build management tools uh, come available. Some of them open source and quite good, and some of them um, obviously uh, commercial um, build management tools. But they all have the same um, purpose, and that is to, um, to do any uh, pre-work that has to be done prior to the compile, do the compile, and th then do any post-work that has to be done after the compile to, to uh, put the system all together. Probably the most famous um, occurrence of um, the, the build management was uh, Microsoft's introduction of their daily sync and stabilize. This was considered radical at the time when uh, Microsoft started developing software in scale. Uh, I think it was introduced with the Windows NT operating system in the early 90s. That what they would do is that every day um, all the code that was, was checked in would be built and the uh, the build would kick off at five o'clock at night if, if you got your code checked in at five o'clock or by five o'clock it would be included in the build if you broke the build you had to go fix it so you, you, know, you, you had to um, make sure that you'd done it right then once it was all built then all of the tests would be run um, and the, the defects found and the defects would be fed back so um, there was a period uh, probably I think about a month, when um, there would be no new functionality put in uh, and that time would be devoted to just stabilizing the product, getting reducing the number of defects and getting it to be a stable, shippable product. So that was the origin of um, Microsoft's famous uh, daily sync and stabilize. There have been some comments um, now that uh, Microsoft is backing away from a daily build and other people's recommendations that uh, a daily build is far too infrequent, it ought to be hourly. Well, take your pick. Uh, um, the advantages of uh, build tools is that they're, they're faster and having, um, they're also less error prone. Once you've figured it out once, it'll run that way at the same time. Whereas I can tell you from past experience, that trying to manually build a product of even partial complexity is fraught, it's error prone, and you really just don't want to do it. So by all means, you know, use automation, that's good for it, so use it where it's available. The, the other end of it is the release management, and that is um, getting releasing, just as you have dependencies within a system, you have dependencies across systems, so possibly you're releasing a new application, it depends on a new version of the um, operating system, or it depends uh, particularly where you have a change of interface or something of that nature. You've got um, mutually dependent pieces of, of um, a system um, that have to be released at the same time. It either all goes in together 
all comes out together. Now, um, you might think this is uh, not a big deal, but uh, when you get into some of these large organizations where they've got, um, say, 100 major systems, um, something like 1,500 major, uh, significant changes a week, um, it gets to be a big deal. And so this release management um, is a fairly significant area of uh, automation to make sure that either things are released together or stopped together. Well, generally, the, the more releases you have, the more need you have for critical releases, the, the more reason there is to automate the release uh, management of these things. So the summary for this topic then is that um, Software builds and releases are areas that have become more important as um, as increase as, as uh, numbers and complexity have, have increased. And uh, I don't think anybody these days um, manually builds their software. It's just too complicated. Um, so you might as well use the tools right off the bat. The automation has uh, helped these two areas, and particularly if you are in any commercial environment, um, and I'd say any um, uh, internet um, applications, you're going to have to coordinate the changes of systems, the change of data files, and changes of a whole bunch of stuff. And release management there becomes quite a big deal. So you will need to use some automation in that uh, in those areas. Okay.